What's up, y'all, and happy Monday morning to each and every one of you out there. Whether you're watching here, near, or far, welcome back to the beautiful, beautiful Florida Panhandle, and welcome back to the Morning Vibe Monday edition. Mondays are always a, a little, like, they're exciting. They get me rejuvenated. I love getting them in, coming in early, shooting these podcasts. A lot of times I'll pre-record the podcast for the other ones during the week, but my Monday one, I always try to get up at, like, 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning, come in, do a little bit of prep work. And just get myself jacked up for what what's going to be just a great, great week. I hope you guys had a wonderful, wonderful Easter weekend. Um, hopefully you got to spend that time with family and loved ones. We've had a busy, busy um, last week or so here in, in our area. So last week I did have some friends down, um, I guess a week ago from today, John Dalton was down from Creek Fishing Adventures. And then right after that, we had some of our good friends from Kentucky come down and spend the whole week. Did a lot of fishing this week. Um, we, we were definitely on the water a whole lot. Um, the things it's finally turning around here in our area on the on the fishing front. It seemed like um, I was just seeing things that that made me think that the water is is about ready to turn on. We really still haven't gotten like deep into the Pompano Run yet. Like if you're coming over from the Camry Ron Channel and you're you're into the fishing stuff, we're we're almost there. Like we're seeing a few here and there, but we really haven't got that that big push of like. You go out there and everybody's just limiting out in an hour like you get sometimes when, when we really start hammering down on the Pompano Run. Um, Spanish Micro have moved in, seen tons of bait balls that have been in and around the area. Um, you know, I posted a video a couple weeks ago over on the CMR channel uh, catching those Bonita. We were like, we were snacking them or snacking them. <laughs> you can tell what I got on my mind this morning. We were snatching them, not snacking them. Um, and uh, just had a great time with those. Spanish mackerel were in this past week, and it was it was insane. Had a couple really cool catches. So if you're not subscribed over to the CMR channel and you are into the fishing, the outdoor stuff, make sure you go check that out. I've got a bunch of, of good videos coming up here in the, in the next few days. It's going to be really, really killer. Lots of stuff going on in the, in the uh, sports world this past weekend. The NBA wrapped up their regular season, I believe, over the weekend. So that's, that's done. They're getting ready to move into their playoff. The Masters was this weekend. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I can't remember the guy's name that won it. Um, I, the whole thing going in the Masters this week, and it, it always cracks me up with the mainstream media of what they like try to do and what they try to make things into. Because the, all they wanted to talk about was the LIV versus the, the PGA Tour. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's, it's a whole deal where a bunch of the PGA Tour stars left, went over to LIV Golf, which is a Saudi Arabian-owned company. They do things way different than the PGA does. But when you do these majors... I don't think they're really sanctioned by like the actual PGA. That popping you guys are hearing is my coffee pot over there. I'm making a pot of coffee and it is extremely loud this morning. So if you're hearing that popping in the headset or not, you're whatever you're listening on. Um, that is exactly what that is, is my coffee over there. So, but uh, it was funny because every single player had basically said they wanted this to be about the, that is just loud. It's so loud. I don't know if you guys can hear it as loud as I can. Sorry. Um, all the players that said, you know, we want this to be about golf. We want this to be about the tournament. But every single question, how do you feel about so-and-so from LIV? How do you feel about so -and, -so? and that's all they wanted to hammer down. I'm like, can we just, like, stop and talk about golf for a minute? I'm not a huge golf fan. I do usually like to watch the Masters. Um, not even really for the golf, but main, mainly for the scenery. Like, it is a such a gorgeous place over there at Augusta National um, in Georgia. I would love to visit there one day just to walk that. Not, I mean, obviously, I'm never going to be able to play that course. I do golf a little, but nothing like that. Um, but I would love to walk that course. I, th I think it would just be a beautiful course just to be on and and tour um it just it'd be really cool so um had that going on i'm trying to nascar raced on the dirt at bristol everybody hates that still um if you're keeping up with that uh pretty pretty sure christopher bell won that one it's it's just not it's not normal it's not when they did it with the trucks you know back five six seven years ago whatever it was it was like okay that's that's fine because if you don't keep up with the nascar the truck series is like the lowest tier of the main NASCAR series. You got tons of like spinoffs and regional races and stuff like that. But as far as the main like NASCAR series, you got the trucks, you got the, um, I don't know what it's called now, the Camping World Series. I'm not even sure what they call it now. And then you've got the big cup race. Um, and when they raced the trucks, it was like, okay, that's cool. You know, you, you can race trucks. That, you know, that, that you can justify that on dirt. But when they started hauling loads of dirt into Bristol, 
it's just that of all the tracks to do that too. That's just, that ain't it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's like, that's not the track that I think they should have done that to Bristol's Bristol. You know, they, they need to be racing on concrete at Bristol. That's just my opinion. But I will tell you, that's a, that's a lot of people's opinions too. So not a lot of people dig in the, uh, the NASCAR racing on the dirt at Bristol, including the drivers, the drivers hate it too. Like when you watch it in every interview, every driver's like, this sucks. We don't want to do this. Why are you making us do this? The fans don't enjoy it. We don't enjoy it. What's going on? So um, for an entertainment-driven sport, NASCAR sure has taken a lot of the entertainment out of it. Um, and I'll leave it at that. I, I will say that, and then I'll, I'll leave that right there. Um, but I do want to get into today's topic. And, and today's topic and it's a suiting because it just came off of a collaboration with John Dalton from Creek Fishing Adventures. And I want to talk to you guys today about collaborations with other content creators, why you should do it, why you shouldn't do it. Um, how it benefits you, how it will never benefit you. And we're, we're just going to kind of do a rundown. And, and I know not everybody that listens to this podcast are, are content creators. So I always encourage you to take this into other walks of life as well. Yes, I'm talking about content creation this morning, uh, but there's a number of places that you can implement this in your life as far as utilizing other people around you and how to utilize them, how not to utilize them. This does not just apply only in the content creation world. Um, now if you, obviously if you're super, super green and you don't know what a collaboration is, it's where two YouTubers get together and they make a video together. Um, I will tell you guys that pretty much all of 2022, there were three people that were owning the content creation world, outdoor world, I should say. And that was AO fishing with Norm and Lojo. And what they were doing was they were creating video content together um, on a weekly, monthly basis. I'm not sure how often they film. I don't know what their filming schedule was, but they would get together and they would make it a point for all three people to get a day and to create videos with each other. Therefore, they could put out a different video. So uh, let's start on the very, very simple side of things. Collaborations are awesome. It gives you someone to be out on the, the boat with you or on the beach with you or wherever it is you're fishing, lake, whatever you're fishing on. It gives you an opportunity to be with somebody else. Um, it gives you an opportunity to learn and to gain knowledge from someone who probably does things different than you do. Now, I'm not, I don't mean they have to be a giant creator or they have to have X amount of subscribers. One of my one of my biggest pet peeves ever is when somebody walks up to me and they're like, hey, I'm so-and-so and I have 500 subscribers. Or, hey, I'm so-and-so and I have 100,000 subscribers. I don't care. I don't. Like, I, I really don't. Can I get along with you? And are you cool to hang out with? And are we going to have a good time? That, that's the only thing I care about when I start collaborating with other content creators. I don't care about your size. And, and it's just I know everybody gets hung up on that number that sit there, sits there beside their subscriber count. And it really just does not matter anymore. It, it really doesn't. Like if you could see the analytics of YouTube, you take this channel, for example. We have 300 subscribers on this channel, 301, whatever it is. Still a relatively new, small channel. But, you know, we'll get somewhere between three and 500 views and uploads. So, yeah, on paper, that looks amazing. But I'm fully aware that the reason we get those is because I have a lot of audiences coming over from the CMR page and watching this. So if I walk up to somebody and I start boasting, I'm like, yeah, my channel has 300 subscribers, but I'm getting 500 views and upload. That doesn't do anything for anybody. Don't ever start a conversation with the number of followers or subscribers and don't lead with that question. It's just, it's not a good question to lead with, in my opinion. Now, does it help? Sure. Once you get up into the 100, 200, 300,000 range, obviously you're going to have more people that that video is getting pushed to in the beginning. Um, so how does a collaboration help you as a creator? And I think this answer is going to shock you a little bit because I don't think it's what you think it is. When we'll see, we'll talk about it. And maybe you're right on the same page as I am. So um, us, for example, we have been so, so blessed to get to have worked with a lot of big names in this industry and still do today. Um, when you can, you know, you can go out and film with a Dar Sizzle, a Daniel Arms, a John Dalton from Creek Fishing Adventures this week, that is huge for your channel but it doesn't really change a lot. And here's what I'm saying. If I go out with John, and it's the first time I've ever been out with John on the boat on this past weekend, and John drops a video today with me in it, and I don't say anything in his video, I'm not present in his video, and he's like, hey, by the way, go check out Cameraman Ron. Ain't nobody from his channel coming to your channel. I'm just telling you right now, it's not going to happen. If you think a bigger creator simply giving you a shout out is going to change anything for your channel, you're wrong. I'm telling you right now, you are wrong. Now, 
How does it help you? And I'm a prime example of this because I worked with a lot of big creators as I was coming up in the beginning. It wasn't them giving me shout outs. It was being present on their channels. That's what helps you grow. You get your face out there. You get your personality out there. You get your content out there. And you do that through being present on other content creators' platforms, not necessarily by getting a shout out. I, I get, and I don't, I don't want to sound like harsh about this because I don't mean to be, but I'll get 20 messages a day. A, people wanting to fish with me, and B, people wanting to get me to give their channel a shout-out. They're like, hey, will you give my channel a shout-out? Check it out. Here it is. Sure. I, you know what? I'll give you a shout-out here and there, but it's not going to do anything for you, especially somebody my size. Um, you know, sometimes it works. I mean, Daniel did a thing, and him, him and I talked about this, where he would just randomly, but it was how Daniel approached it. It really was, and, and I, let me explain Daniel would get in, in a video and he would have a up, up and coming channel that he really liked. And it wasn't just as simple as him saying, oh, by the way, go check out Ron from Cameron Ron channel. Da, 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 da. He would go on there and he, it would be somebody that he'd never even worked with. He'd be like, hey, man, you know, I've really I've been watching this channel, um, so ABC Farms, whatever it is. I really, really like their content. I go over there and just check them out. And if you like what you see, tell them Daniel and Houston sent you. And a lot of people would do that. But Daniel's approach was so much different than everybody else. He was doing that from a genuine point of view, trying to help these other channels out. Um, it was somebody that he was invested in to an extent because he had watched their content. Um, so in that sense, it definitely helps. Now, where it will get you is if that happens and you get like this little rush of people, which it's not going to be huge. All 750,000 subscribers of Daniels are not going to rush over to that channel, but a few of them will. couple things. When they get there, what are they going to see? Now, obviously, Daniel is only giving these like mini shout outs to these channels that he's been watching. So he knows they're uploading regularly. He knows they've got good content. And so when the people get there, he knows what they're going to see. For us... Think about this. You send me a message and you say, hey, Ron, will you give my channel a shout out? I, I really want to, I'm trying to build a following. Will you get give them a shout out? Now, I will tell you, I have never once given a channel a shout out without going and looking at their channel first for a couple reasons. One, my first thing that I'm going to look at as a content creator, when you send me a message and ask me to collaborate with you or to give you a shout out, is not the number of subscribers you have. It's not the number of views you have. It's the time you uploaded last. First and foremost, no questions asked. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how many views you get. I really don't care what kind of content you make. What I want to know is when was the last time you uploaded? So if you send me a message, you say, hey, let's collaborate. And I go over and I look at your channel and you haven't posted for six months. Mm -mm, it's not going to happen. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I wish I got, I wish I could remember who told me this because it was the funniest story ever. Um, but I cannot remember if you're one of my friends out there and you're watching this, one of my content creator friends, and you and I are the ones that had this conversation, please send me a text and tell me, Hey, you, we are the ones that had this conversation. Um, but I was having a conversation and there was a bigger creator and it wasn't him that I was talking to. It was about one of his friends and they had shot him a message like, Hey man, I'd really love to do a collaboration with you. And he gets on there and he looks at their channel and this was a dude that was known for collaborating with smaller up and coming channels. And he looked at it and they hadn't posted in six months. So he sent him a message back and he's like, I think you need to collaborate with yourself first. Now that's, that's a hard, hard hit right there. I understand that, but it's so, so true. You have got to establish a presence. You've got to get some videos. You've got to get yourself comfortable on camera. You don't want people coming to your channel when you're still bad on camera. You don't. You don't want a big following being there until you figure it out. It was uh, it was interesting to see how that progressed. And then you have people that, you know, you give them a shout out and then they go over there and they look and then it's like, oh, okay. Or or my favorite is, do you want to collaborate with me? And you're like, yeah, let's get together. Okay, well, I got to get all this stuff together. I got to have this and that and I need camera equipment. And I'm like, you okay, but you really, you don't need all that. If you just bring your phone or a GoPro, you'll be perfectly fine. Um, and then... The next thing is how to collaborate. And this one's a big one because, for instance, Daniel and I do a great job of this. John and I just did this. Um, like when you, I posted a video yesterday on Sunday of John and I fishing. Um, I only showed John catch one fish. Now, obviously, John caught a lot more than one fish on that trip, but I only showed one. Now, there was a couple teasers there where he was hooked up and different things. And then I put a little note right in the middle of the video. Right in the middle of the video. I was trying to get ahead of myself. 
And I'm like, hey, go check out John's version of this video if you want to see what he caught. Because if I go in and I show everything John caught, or John posts his videos first and it shows everything I caught, that loses its luster, especially if you're the smaller channel. So you have to know who you're working with and make sure that you're working with people that is not going to take all the content from that trip if you're shooting content like that together and throw it all in their video. Now, I will say this. When John comes into town, when Daniel comes into town, they are all that that's my number one priority is getting them a video. If I get a video out of it, that's great. Um, most of the time I don't this. Yes. The one I posted yesterday and the reason I posted on Sunday, I really had no intentions of making a video out of that because they were here visiting me and I wanted to make sure they got good quality content out of it. But I went ahead and posted because I ended up catching a new species and we're doing the whole 50 species in 2023 over there. So I needed to post a video just to share like that little species or whatever. But my number one priority is making sure they get a video. I want Daniel to get a video, but vice versa. When I go out to Oklahoma to AFH, Daniel makes it a priority for me to get a video there. It's not all about me being there and filming. Now, we definitely do stuff with them and are present in their videos, but when I go visit them, it's about me getting a video at that point. And then Daniel is present in my video. You have to be willing to go out and put in some work for someone else that it, knowing that it's not going to benefit you. And I think it, financially, <laughs> let me, I say the words benefit very loosely there. It's not going to benefit you financially. Now, long term, it's going to. Obviously, I'm not making any money if I'm present in a video on Daniel's channel. However, the growth that I experienced from that, because his audience gets used to seeing me, it's not just Daniel saying, go check out Cameron Ron's channel. It is me being present in that video every single time I'm there. If I'm there, I'm present. I'm, I'm, I'm active in the video. I'm talking. I'm having a good time. I'm interacting with his audience. Um, same thing when we went down to visit with Darcy and Brian just a couple of weeks ago. I was present in their video. Now, we all shot, they shot a video and I shot a video that day, and it was the same exact thing. If you watch those two videos, you're getting brand new content from each one. You have to make sure that you're doing that, especially if you're the bigger creator. You have to make sure that who you're collaborating with is getting footage for their channel that you're not burning on your channel before they ever get a chance to post it. That's your responsibility as a bigger creator. Now, love it or leave it, that's not what everybody does. I'm just saying that's the way it should work because if you have 500 subscribers and you post a video of a trip that you and I took together, it's probably not going to hurt me that much because I'm just being honest from a size perspective, you're going to get 500 to a thousand views on that video. I'm going to turn around and post it and get seven to 10,000 views on it. So that's not going to hurt me. Now where that can be really flipped over is if you have a really big creator and they put out a video before somebody with 500 subscribers, there's a decent chance that the people that are watching their video has already seen it on this bigger, bigger creators platform. So you have to be really, really mindful of that when you start doing collaborations. Collaborations can be amazing. One of the number one things that I feel like collaborations do is takes all the pressure off. It really does. Like if I'm out on the Mako solo by myself, it's all on me. 100%. I have to catch every fish. I have to provide all of the entertainment it's all on me. There's nobody there to get my back if things go awry or if I don't catch any fish that day or, you know, if it if I'm not feeling it that day and I'm not adding the comedy to it like I like to do. So when you have some, even as simple for me, like when Sarah's on the boat with me, you guys have heard me say this so many times. When the PYT is on the boat with me, it takes all the pressure off me. She's very entertaining. People love her. They love, you know, interacting with her from an audience standpoint. So, when she's on the boat with me, it takes all the pressure off. I don't have to catch as many fish. One, she catches fish too. So when you got two people fishing, you're obviously much more likely to have more fish put in the boat. So you knew, normally if there's somebody on there with me, we're catching more fish. Um, it takes, you know, it adds that entertainment value. We can, you know, we can play off of each other completely for what's going on. So it's from that standpoint, it's amazing. It is great to have that pressure taken off of you when you can add other people and other things into the mix. The downside of it is exactly what I said. You have make, you have got to make sure you're working with people who have your best interest in, in mind as well as their own. I mean, everybody's out here trying to create content, and there's no question about that, but you have to make sure that you're feeding into what they're doing. The other Like last week, I went out and I did a little skit with somebody for their YouTube channel. It'll be coming out here before too long. 
um, just he asked me if I'd come out and help him out with a video, and I went and helped him out. I didn't go film. I didn't take my cameras. I just went out and helped him with a, a video for his channel. And you have to be willing to do that. You've got to be willing to step out there, help other people on their channels without it benefiting you financially. Um, because it, it, and the reason I keep saying benefiting you financially is I'm a firm believer. I don't care if you show up on a subscriber, a channel that's got 10 subscribers, or if you ch still show up on a channel of 10 million subscribers, I feel like putting your face out there as much as possible and letting people get to know you is the number one way to like grow your brand. You're obviously you're putting yourself out there on your channel. Um, but if you like start popping up on other channels and you're there and you're present, that tells it just puts your face in front of people and, and that's what content creation is all about it's becoming recognizable it's like getting people to fall in love with your character and who what you do on camera so i'm a firm believer that you know it does not have to benefit you financially because you're not making any money off of their video as you shouldn't i'm not saying that um but it, even though it doesn't benefit you financially you have to be present in those videos in some way and that's you know that is going to put your brand out there. It's going to build your brand. And in turn, every time you build your brand, that is benefiting you. you it's benefiting your growth. It's benefiting your recognizability. Like it, it benefits so many things. We, When we go out and do these collaborations with bigger channels, smaller channels, whatever they may be, it's, you know, it's so much fun to like participate in those videos. Because again, all the pressure's off of you. It's somebody else's audience. You're you are for the possibly for the first time, you are putting yourself in front of somebody else's audience. Um, and that's a great, great place to be if you have that opportunity. It doesn't matter what size they are. One hundred percent it matters that you are building your brand in front of a new audience. If I go down the street today and I meet one new person that subscribes to my channel, that's one more audience member that I've gained in. That could become a loyal audience member. Um, that will help carry me to the next level. It doesn't, I don't need a thousand a day. If I get one really good one, that's better than a hundred that show up that may not ever watch your stuff again because they saw you on, you know, a viral video or whatever it may be. So I, I know this has been kind of long winded about this, but I just, I, I can't hammer the, the point home enough. Collaborations are awesome. And you guys have seen, I mean, you guys have seen us right here. We have collaborated with channels much bigger than us we've collaborated with channels much smaller than us i got a, i got a uh, instagram message the other day uh, a gentleman was coming down the panhandle and wanted to fish together and it happened to be a day that i could make it work and i was like absolutely let, let's do it like, I'd, I'd be happy to let, let's go out and let's do it um and at that point he, he was blocked he was shocked he was like i can't i can't believe you said yes i'm like why would i not say yes like i have an opportunity to go fish with somebody else and i it's a day it works for me. Now, I can't go fish with everybody that messages me. I wish I could, but it would literally be me doing like three fishing trips a day and still not being able to get to everyone. So I do try. I mean, I promise I try to fish with subscribers. I try to fish with other content creators. Um, it's just with our schedule, it's just impossible that for us to do that. But I love to collaborate. I love being out with other content creators. I've learned so much i've learned just as much stuff about content creation from people on a way smaller platform than i have as i have of people on a much larger platform than i have and that's the truth you can learn something from somebody every time you collaborate with another creator 100 percent. did they do not have to be bigger than you they don't have to be smaller than you you can learn something from them every single time you step out and collaborate because everybody does things different and you never know when you might pick up on something that you really like the way they do it and you start implementing that into your creation at that time as well so guys that's all i got for you today i truly hope you enjoyed this one you know it's collaborations are awesome i highly highly recommend collaborating with other creators it it, it uh it takes you to a different level. I really, really do feel like that. So that's all I got for you today. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Crack on that morning vibe. Guys, we can't wait to see you on the next one. Y'all take care, and we'll see you soon.